This thing on? Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yo. Should you practice art? Or should art be your practice? I had a question, so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner God, you know? The one that's gonna be a master. The one that's more than a rapper. The one that's an educator. The one that seeks enlightenment. He travels with concepts. He's got the mindset expansive. He overstands that it's time combined with travel and concepts. Makes his mind convex. Sort of like when you look at a brain scan. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This show is Comics Today. It is a show that we do on Wednesday to celebrate the best day of the week, that being New Comic Book Day. And as part of this show, we talk about some of the books that you all may have picked up, some of the books you all may have read. We talk about news and current events related to comics, and we typically have a guest or two on to help me to make sense of something that is happening in the world of comics and collectibles. And tonight we are going to have a guest on that's going to help me to help you to potentially get the grail comic that has always been out of your reach. And there is a reason, Joe, that I chose to use the thumbnail that you see today and all will be revealed, but I can tell you it is not because you've converted me to DC. I have a lot more love for DC than I did before, but I am not a convert, sir. Make mine Marvel. A couple of updates before I go to the chat to figure out what it is that you guys may have picked up at your LCS. Garage Con is going down November 11th. I think we are going to start things off around 10 o'clock or so. So if you have not registered for Garage Con, I encourage you to do so on ReggieCollects.com. I'm having some conversations. We might do things a little different. We may have a surprise or two at GarageCon, still working out the details to see whether that magic is going to get made. But GarageCon is going down November 11th. I had someone ask me whether it's still happening. Yes, it is, because I said that it was going to happen, so it is going to happen, uh, as is our attendance at New York Comic Con. Uh, I'll be there the 12th through the 14th, uh, as will members of the creative team, including Scott and Doug, the writers behind uh, Marcus and also Isolation. The print files for Marcus have been released to the printer. We are, fingers crossed, good to go there. Uh, still a lot of details to work out, but we will be there Right now, we think that we are going to have some booth time from 1 to 3 each day uh, on the 12th, 13th, and 14th, 1 to 3. There may be some additional times added, so definitely stay tuned. Uh, there are also going to be a couple of really cool things that are going to be available at New York Comic Con. So if you are there, I encourage you to uh, to check it out. Huge shout out to the Patreon members and also the channel supporters right here on the YouTube machine. I see that Trev the Shipping Guru is our newest member here on the channel. Uh, Trev, we appreciate your continued support, brother. Uh, one of the other questions I have for people out there is, have you guys read Ranger Stranger? There's a reason for that. An alert popped up on my phone as I was getting ready to start the show. I'm curious if you read that. Now, with that said, I want to go to the chat. I want to figure out what it is that you guys may have picked up earlier today from your LCS. So if you hit the LCS, you picked up some books, I want to know what you picked up. If you want to shout out your LCS, you can do that. If you had a chance to read something today that you thought was good, that we should put on the top of our reading stacks. I want to know what that book is. If you picked up a book today or recently that is not a new book, but it is a new to you book, I want to know about that book as well. That way we can live vicariously through you spending money. That's how we're going to do it tonight. Shout out to everybody that is in the live stream right now. Uh, go into the chat. Uh, stranger danger. <laughs> Trev is like, stranger danger? Question mark. Uh, brother. I don't know what a stranger danger is, but Kevin Hart's production company has basically, I guess, inked a deal with this publication from Scout called Stranger Danger. And uh, I, I saw the alert on Key Collector app as I was starting the show here. And it says Kevin Hart's production company secured the rights to, I'm sorry, I, I said it wrong. Ranger Stranger, Ranger Stranger. No, I think I got it right. I read it wrong. Uh, Ranger Stranger 
for an adult animated TV series. Yet another show that I will not watch because it's in cartoon format, but I do like some Kevin Hart. So that is going down. That's the new thing uh, that just popped up. Have not read it. Uh, Kevin, if you are watching this, I highly encourage you to check out Isolation. It is perfectly made for you giving us some money to adapt in any way you choose to. I'm looking at you, Kevin. All right, let me go to the chat real quick here. Uh, Planet Arizona, how you doing, brother? Actually got a grail today from Greg's Comics in Mesa, Arizona. I think that I've been to Greg's Comics. I, I think that I've been to that shop. I want to say I've been there. Uh, a solid mid-grade copy of Iron Man number one, a book I do believe I featured just recently in one of my videos, uh, Planet Arizona, very fitting name given that you are in Arizona. Congrats to you for picking up that book. Uh, Tina says, Creep Show. <laughs> Ah, uh, Tina, Tina won something recently on the show. Creep show from uh from Skybound. You are very welcome, my friend. Uh, my Canadian brother Mark says, no, no truck up there in Canada. Uh, he says, Make it so by Patrick Stewart is very good. I saw uh, a headline or something like that on Instagram about the Patrick Stewart, something or another. Didn't read it. I'm guessing it is it a comic? Is it a book? What what are there photos, uh, Mark? Are there photos? Because that that's how I'm getting down right now. Uh, Tyler says, Ranger Stranger looks hilarious. Scout Comics, who puts my book out too, publishes it. There you go, Tyler Ham. Tyler, you you've already you've already started the ball rolling here, brother. What is your book? Go ahead and shout your book out in the comment section, Tyler Ham. Oh wait, I know Tyler Ham. Never mind. I've talked about your book before. <laughs> <laughs> scrolling through the comments here another channel member frog brawler how you doing brother he says light day today peacemaker x-men uh mom breaks the internet and got have you read gods he says skip it it's ten dollars really jonathan hickman's book is 10 bucks i was looking forward to reading that brother but i don't know that i want to spend 10 bills on it frog brawler you said skip it just send me your copy brother i give you two bucks for it send me your copy i'll make it happen no lcs today says uh sells fantastic uh he he did however pick up some burritos and tacos um are the kids eating that are, are the kids eating burritos and tacos fantastic i don't i don't know that they are gordon how you doing brother welcome to the live stream he says he signed up for conan and they just had a third printing of issue number one um a couple of people have mentioned that conan number one is a pretty solid read i i still have not read that let me let me make myself a note here real quick um, let me make myself a note to pick that up and read that because I've heard repeatedly that it's good and not just from people that are fans of, of Conan, which which I think says a lot. Uh, Doug says, I didn't get any new books today, but Dave gave me some uh, back trades. He borrowed. So if women, it's women. So Dave gave you some books that he borrowed. Doesn't that mean he has to give those books back to the other person? I, I'm, I don't understand that. I don't understand how the Bratton brothers get down. I don't understand that. Explain that one to me. City and how you doing, brother? I haven't seen your name in a while. It's good to see you. Picked up one of my favorite childhood comics, Gen 13, number one, CGC 9.8. We are living vicariously through you, brother. Congrats for that book. That is what, that's what's up. Uh, you guys are hilarious. Seth, it is good to see you, brother. Ooh, Treff. I was waiting for somebody to talk about that. What did you think? You don't, no spoilers, no spoilers. What did you read it today? What did you think of it, Trev? I, I am interested to hear uh, your thoughts on that one. I'm scrolling through uh, some of the comments here. Uh, what is that? Just picked up Big Apple Batgirl 41 variant. Uh, congrats. He says that is the newest grail. Congrats to you. Uh, that's awesome. I don't think I've ever seen your name. So, uh, welcome unkind to, uh, to the channel. Fingers crossed that the new folks that are in here, give the, uh, the video a thumbs up and also go ahead and subscribe to, to the channel. Seth says, I remember the rescue rangers. You guys are on a roll. You guys are on a roll in here. Photos in the middle. Yes. It's an autobiography. There you go. I love some Patrick Stewart. I think he is such a, such a cool guy. No doubt about it. Uh, and Next Generation is one of my favorite shows of all times. And he makes a fantastic Charles Xavier. No doubt about it. Um, scrolling through some of the comments here. Mr. E, how you doing? He says, just finished reading Transformers 1. 
it was awesome. I was embargoed to talk about that in detail. Uh, but but I think now that the book is out, I rather enjoyed it. I rather enjoyed my read of, of uh, Transformers 1, and I may actually read it again. I read it for the first time, I think, like like three weeks ago now uh, at this point. Um, so I may reread it and uh, and check it out. So scrolling through some of the comments here, uh, got a book I missed to complete the run, a Batman uh, Audio Adventures number seven. Congrats. And also he picked up, Joe picked up Conan the Barbarian number three. Congrats to you for those snags, brother. That is awesome. Scrolling down through some of the comments here, he says it's a great start. It's more like Gen 1, right? It, it feel it has almost like a Gen 1 feel to it. Did you get that vibe as well? I'm curious. Um, Hydras, how you doing, brother? He says, uh, went to the LCS Nirvana uh, this morning, picked up Transformers 1. Haven't had a chance to read it yet. Fingers crossed that you like it, brother. Uh, Kenny has made note of the X-Men wall, which has evolved. The wall has changed a little bit from the last time that you guys saw it. Um, so I shifted some things around. Definitely a, a cool wall back there. No doubt about it. Scrolling through some of the comments here. Her Patrick Stewart will be in Deadpool 3 as Dazzler. <laughs> Everybody and their mother is going to be in uh, Deadpool 3. There is no doubt about it. We're actually probably going to talk about Deadpool a little bit later in the show. Uh, so I was wondering if anybody read Gods. We have at least one person that has read Gods and so far uh, says to go ahead and skip it. I, I still want to read it because I like Jonathan Hickman. I like the cosmic stuff, so I want to check it out. Uh, so I will, I will read it. Uh, the other big question was whether anybody read Transformers and there are a couple of people here uh, that picked it up and also have read it and seemingly enjoyed it. I had a chance to read Amazing Spider-Man 238 again. I have not read it in a very long time, so I read that. I read Marvel Spotlight 2, uh, which is the first appearance of Werewolf by Night. Those are two books that I analyzed in a video yesterday. Had not read those books, or, well, had not read one and had not read the other in a long time. So I read those. I will tell you, Marvel Spotlight 2, while old and dated, was rather enjoyable. It was a rather enjoyable read. Uh, I had a chance today to also read Dracula 2. I do not think Dracula 2 is out. This is from James Tyen, specifically from Skybound. Uh, I, I might be embargo from talking about that one, uh, but I read Dracula 2. Uh, I, it was not a terrible read. It was not a terrible read at all. I want to go back and reread issue one and then uh, segue into two again. Uh, but that was that was an interesting read. I also have been trying to catch up on my Miles Morales. So I read uh, I read them in the wrong order just because I was lazy. I read 10, then I read nine, and then I started reading eight for whatever reason. Uh, Miles Morales continues to just be something that that I enjoy reading. So just a, a cool book overall. All right. Who is Taylor Swift? Says uh, says Dan. <laughs> that that is the big question of the day, brother, because I mean, apparently. He's been rumored to be in uh, X-Men since like 2016. And I'm guessing at some point she is actually going to appear. Just recently, she was seen with like the the, the team of the, the actors from, from the Deadpool movie, the same way that she was seen with, uh, I think, the writer and some actors from the X-Men movie back in 2016. So sooner or later, she has to appear at Dazzler. And that, that's just the way that this thing happens to go. So I'm looking through the old Tomb of Dracula series was great as well from the 70s, says Tyler. I like uh, Nosferatu. I like anything with vampires. I, I try to watch it. I try to read it. Um, so there you go. She's the breakup queen. Woo. Cool. She she hung out with somebody soon to be ex-wife to get back at him just recently. She is no stranger to controversy and stirring the pot. So I, I don't know if she's ever going to appear in this movie. Uh, I, I, I feel like it's like a, a marketing person, a PR person is like, let's just get people talking and let's put these people in the in the same place. I am not touching that one. <laughs> 
I am not touching that one, but I will put it up on screen for people to read. So anyway, uh, we have a couple of things that I want to try to get to a little bit later in, in the show. For those folks that came in a little bit late, Garage Con is going down November 11th here in the Charlotte area at my house. If you are interested in coming, you definitely want to head over to ReggieCollects.com. Click on the tab that says Garage Con. There's all kinds of details there. You have to register in order to actually get the address of where the location will be. Do not wait until the last minute because I can promise you I'm going to be busy doing other things that day. Uh, but you can um, sign up. Um, on ReggieCollects.com. We are also going to be at New York Comic Con. Myself, Doug, who is here in the room, Scott, who is the writer behind Marcus, everybody's going to be there and we will be uh, at one booth in specifically from like one to three. There may be some other activities going on. So if you are at New York Comic Con, uh, stay tuned to the Instagram for more details. So as I alluded to also at the top of the show, we are going to talk about a method through which you can potentially get a grail that you have always felt was out of your price range. And uh, I was I, I heard part of a story that kind of captured my attention, and that is what prompted me to invite my next guest onto the show to have a chat about how he works with people to help them to secure comics that they've always wanted, but they did not think that they could attain. And so I want to welcome to the show right now, Blue Chip Comics, specifically my man, Nico. Nico, welcome to the show. How you doing, brother? What's happening, Mr. Reggie? I'm doing great, man. It's awesome to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, it's just awesome to be uh, our first appearance on uh, Reggie Collects. So the first time we met was at a con. I want to say, was it San Diego Comic-Con last year? Yes, sir. And I was impressed that you were literally walking around, uh, giving out your, your books to dealers. One of my employees at the time, you know, literally, you know, picked up my book and I was like, I chased him down and <laughs> you had just given me. But it was, uh, it's pretty cool, man. That's when we met. Great conversation. Uh, we love your content. Um, the shop hears it every time we come into the store. Uh, it's one of the the top two that's always on our TV, listening to the different announcements, different things that you bring to the marketplace. We just love your transparency. We love the fact that when we get off of your shows, it's not a negative feeling uh, about the market. It's actually a feeling where we're like, oh, there's hope here. Okay, I don't have to focus on that. Maybe I can go uh, redirect my energy here. And that's something that you do, and you do it very well. It's very special quality that you have. And so... The minute we got the invite to get on, we were like, yes, right. you know, I, you, my, I, I, my, well, I'll wait up uh, the dinner and stuff. We'll wait for later. You know what I mean? The, the kids will wait for later. We have a dinner with a family that came into town. I was like, this is Reggie. Collect. No, we'll, we'll make the magic happen. I, I do appreciate the kind words. I do, however, have to clarify one point. You, you, yeah. you said that I am the top channel that is on in the shop. I think that's what you meant to say. You said top <laughs> one or two. I think you meant the top. I just want to clarify. There's a guy sitting to your side. I don't know this guy. Who is this guy over here? So this is Derek Haley. He's been collecting uh, and dealing on all the big social media platforms for, I don't know. So, years. Well, yeah, over a decade. Just a great dude. Had many, uh, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in transactions before we ever even decided to work yet. In fact, you kind of tell your background how we met and all that. Yeah, actually, uh, the first interaction and and me, hi Reggie, uh, <laughs> first interaction and uh, me being aware of uh, uh, Nico here was because of a friend of mine. He uh, he was buying a nine point eight TMNT number one. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. at that time he was spending one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right, big book. It's a rare book uh, at that grade point. And so he told me about how he had this great interaction, great transaction with uh, Nico. And then he told me he also has a Batman one. And I said to myself, I want a Batman one, but I can't afford the whole damn thing. So David, make this happen, my friend. So he set up an interaction and then I started talking to him more. And then he, he was telling me and educating me about what good books to go after. Um, and as a result, I was excited. I, when I told my, uh, my in-laws, they don't collect for anything. And I said, this may be a good investment opportunity. And they said, 
I'm on board. So mm. sign me up. And that in itself of them interacting with uh, Nico was another, you know, fifteen or twenty thousand uh, dollar transaction. So he does. It, it's not about money for him. It's about edu educating those around him, those in the mm. community, supporting them, um, giving the best uh, top tier books at the best buyer uh, value. So you know, he has been through and through a genuine and, and uh, an honest person. Thanks, and bro. I really have enjoyed the friendship that's grown from it. Um, Good you know, stuff, I, brother. I, I appreciate that background. And the name was Derek, right? Just to be clear yep, on Derek. that. Yep, Derek. Like okay, Derek good Peter. stuff. Yeah. So so I don't want to get ahead of the story here, but Nico, yeah. you and I had a conversation recently. I was at yeah. soccer practice for my daughter yeah. and yeah. she was scoring all kinds of goals. And you said something to me during that conversation that really captured my attention. And it was the, the fact that you did a deal with a guy mm. to hook him up with Batman 1, a book that he did not think that he could afford. Is that guy Derek? Is that who I'm looking at? Sadly, now, Batman no, one guy? No. <laughs> My friend okay. dropped the ball. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I wish that was a 4.0 Batman uh, one. I had two of them at the time. I had one on eBay, and uh, no, it's a different different book altogether. It's actually the book that's right here on the wall. This one eight. It's a strong presenting one eight. And uh, that gentleman, you know, it's basically it's one of our standard trade deals, right? And so. Um, what I could do is kind of give you the structure of that if you would like and kind of, yeah. Cause, that. cause that's one of that, that the comment struck me like a guy that thought that he could never get it. You were able to make that happen. I want to understand yeah. how you did that. So give me a little bit of the details sure. around how you made that magic happen for well, him. Well, for, first of all, if you don't mind, I just like to, to, to give you the, like the, the before picture of that. And, and, you know, that's really what we do at blue chip. In fact, I remember being on the other side of the table coming up to dealers and getting offered, you know, 40 cents on the dollar, 60 cents on the dollar for like mm. ASM1. Mm. Uh, and I just always had this weird, icky feeling after I walked away from the deal, like I needed a shower uh, because I, I, I sold mine for so much under market, uh, despite the equity or not in the book or loss in the book, I had to sell it so much under the market. And then I ended up having to uh, pay more than market for their book. And I thought, I don't know. I, numbers I get, you know what I mean? I might not read as well as a lot of people, but I can count like a champ. And I, and I just, every time I felt like I need to take a shower. And so yeah. I said, there's got to be a better way. I did not want to do this. I have another industry I've been a part of for 23 years and uh, regional VP there. And I literally had no intentions of ever creating blue chip. And so I thought, okay, let's figure out a way we could make something like this fair. Because in investing, you know, if I can give, share something with you guys, one of our blue chip secrets and you know i'm gonna uh, roll it out here for the very first time it's what allowed us to really have the books that we have here whenever i buy a book right no matter how much i love the hobby and no matter how many decades since i've been a kid i loved it you know at some point a book goes from you know a collectible to an investment depending on what your yearly income is and what i personally do and it served us well and so you guys can utilize this to your advantage or not but i'll just give it to you guys because i love sharing and helping see people grow and see the community win Three R's. The three R's are most important to me. It's really what allowed this entire thing to exist uh, under 10 years. And the three R's is rarity, replaceability, and relevance. How rare is a book? You know, like there's less than, I believe, 100 of Superman number ones. So that's pretty rare. How replaceable is it? Can you go on eBay and replace that book tomorrow? You can't. You just don't. You, if you if it burnt up, well, you know how they say it. It's those three-letter word, right? Three-letter yeah, yeah. And the relevant replaceability and what was the third one relevant replaceability and rarity are we already covered rarity so rarity replaceability and relevance how relevant is superman well superman is the first superhero uh ever right it's the it's it, he's gonna probably be all you know they're gonna probably milking that intellectual property for a long time ever and so I, I don't know. I think it's pretty relevant. So on a scale of one to ten, if you had to scale an, in all three R's, you would scale that a nine to ten in every single category. So you can never go wrong over a three-year window of tracked recorded history of Superman number one. So just picking those up at any point, down market, low market, uh, you know, high market, it doesn't matter. It's a Superman number one. It hits nine to ten in all three uh, um, scenarios and. Not to mention, give you a quick example, and then we'll go right into that Batman. You know, this says 10 cents somewhere on this cover, like right there. I don't know if you can see it. 10 cents on that cover. I think everyone in the community knows this is a 10 cent book. 
Now, what's crazy about it is I paid close to 300 grand for this book. So 300 grand, 10 cents. If you do the math, that's a 3 million X. I'm going to repeat that. That's a 3 million X for my house. Let's say I paid 100 grand for my house 50 years ago. For my house to go to 1X, I have to sell it for 200,000. For it to go to 10X, I have to sell it for a million. So no real estate in recorded history that I've ever heard of has ever had a 3 million X, not even a 300,000 X. However, these funny books, this expensive paper has. So I thought, okay, well, let's stop looking at this the way that I looked at it and just buying only the things I love to collect. Let's buy things that I know that I could sell later as trade bait to get other and massive books that I really want. So that's how it all started. Just give you a little bit of background. And then we could go, if you want, I can tell you a little about the Batman deal. Yeah. So I think you hit on a lot there, as did Doug in the comment section. When I first saw your booth at San Diego Comic-Con, it was very apparent that the quality of books that you were dealing in were not your average comics, right? I saw 9.9s in the case that I had didn't even know came in a 9.9, right? So I think that that goes to the three R's that you just hit upon. But I do want to circle back to the to the question around the Batman one. What was that deal? How did you hook that guy up with that? Give us some details around that because I think it might be helpful for people out there that don't have 300 grand, but still want to get a really awesome book into their collection. Well, thank you so much. First of all, uh, Doug, you're far too kind, my friend. And yeah, we... We literally look for it. When we buy books, we buy the book before we buy the grade. A lot of mm. people will buy the grade and then kind of like justify the book, right? Oh, it's only missing this piece. We buy the book, then we buy the grade, which gives us far better trading power down the road, right? So if that's a tip that you guys could utilize, uh, page quality is great. But if the book looks terrible and it's a white pager, you know, you're going to have a less trading ability. So we typically, whenever we buy the book, and a lot of these books actually came in on trade. So I don't know if you can see them, but it's a lot of the uh, first and silver and some uh, uh, golden. But uh, a lot of these books came in on trade. And the way that our trade deals work, give you this gentleman's, you know, situation here without divulging too much, because I don't know his intent. Yeah, with the don't give all the details, but just, yeah. you know, high level. So right. not a social security number. Yeah, I'm not giving a oh. social. Uh, so... <laughs> So in a nutshell, he approached me about the, the Batman one. So we had to figure out what is the sales price with trade, right? So I post that on our Instagram page at the Blue Chip Comic, if you guys are not following us. But we literally post the price. We try to be the best price anywhere. That's really our thing. Like, can they go here and find a better price? If they can, well, maybe, you know, we need to adjust our price, even if we take a hit, because the store model is we might not always make money, but we will always make a friend. So if I can make a friend right in the process long term the money's inevitable right so even if we have to take a little bit of haircut we'll try to get the best price out there to the community if we can the good news is it's our inventory so we don't have to go back and forth we don't have to haggle with people we automatically know right off the bat if we can make this deal happen there's no letdowns no disappointments no like you know weird stuff going on so we try to be as very transparent best possible price now that we've identified the price for batman Next thing we need to do is figure out what books we're receiving for that Batman. What is his cash availability? Are you able to do 50% cash? That's what we aim for on a trade deal. Yep. But if we can't do 50% cash, we're okay. We're happy. We'll take 30% cash. It's a big book, right? And not everyone's going to have an extra you know, $50,000 floating around. So I get it and we're flexible. We try to make every deal work. At least 90% of our deals work. That's why we're probably what, 95% sold out on our Instagram page. So- And number one trader. Thank you, you're far too kind. He said we're the number one trader in oh. social media, but I, I, listen, <laughs> I don't know who's taking these polls, but I will tell you this. I will tell you this for Derek, sure. Yeah, it's a poll of one. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I get a lot of comments like that, that he's fantastic at trading. Thank you, sir. So. So now that we've identified the price, right? The first thing that we like to do is figure out what tier books are we accepting on trade? So there's yep. three tiers. There's tier A, right? First appearance silver, first appearance gold, you know, pre-code horror, uh, iconic covers, uh, you know, coal, you know, all these different, you know, artists and that have very significant books that never really, what I would consider a blue chip book is if you have a three year window, and in that three-year window, the book will always bounce back stronger, no matter what the economy is. Mm. That's a blue chip book. Mm. And so 
we like to always classify blue chip books in the A tier category. So the yep. A tier category. So if we're taking it in a trade, it's in the A tier if it's a blue chip book for sure. You yep. know, uh, give you an example. What is B tier? B tier, I, I don't want to offend any, um, you know, Punisher lovers or anything. But I'll give you an example. Oh boy, here I, comes the flash. I just had, no, I'm not going to go in, but I just had a conversation with the uh, the gentleman with the Batman. He had like five or six, um, you know, five or six uh, ASM 129s. And I told him, here's what I'm going to do. Nine, six white pager and above A tier. Nine, four, we're going to go to B tier. Now, why do these tiers matter? This is going to sound insane. It's going to sound like we're going to be out of business tomorrow, but I'm going to tell you the truth. We literally pay 90% of last documented sale. Some eBay sales we throw out because we think there's a lot of weird stuff that happens there. However, 90%, if it was an auction house, 90% of last sale in that A tier. So if someone had, let's just say they had, you know, this Miles Morales 9.8. If they had this Miles Morales 9.8 and last sale was, let's just pretend last sale was $30,000. We're going to pay 90% of that for this book. Now, that same customer, if they went on eBay, posted this book, and got full market value, not a penny less. They're gonna pay. They're gonna lose more than what we're paying. So we're paying more than because if they can the sell fees. this book on their own because, because of, of the fees. Yeah, yeah because that fourteen percent margin, right? Yeah. But they yeah. have to get full market value. So A tier benefits the customer tremendously, right? Yep. If their books fall in that A tier. Now B tier, we're gonna pay eighty percent, right? Eighty percent of that market value. C tier, we're going to pay 70% of that market value, right? C tier, we'll literally, you'll see our, our C tier. We'll put that C tier on our Instagram page, blow it out at 15% under last sale, literally to break even, right? Or yeah. to, to make very little margin after all the whatever fees and stuff. So C tier stuff, they're also first appearances. Now, any non-keys, we're not interested in it if you're trading for a key. Give them away. Oh, yeah. We also give the C tier, a lot of our C tiers away on our whatnot show so if you're free yeah for free literally like yes. I'll give you, give you so, so, so quick so quick question so uh you you look at what to to value their book you you said you come up with the price what are you referencing to determine the price for the book that they are buying great question so i look at gpa often i look at go collect as well i'll scrub as much as many data points as possible yep. to make sure the sale is legitimate. In fact, Daryl, uh, uh, Derek handles a lot of that stuff here at the shop, uh, or one of our other employees. Sometimes we'll, we'll, you know, scrub those lists. We'll scrub the list once, sometimes twice, depending on how valuable it is. But we'll primarily start with GPA, and then we'll branch out from there. From there, and then yeah. for their books that they are trading in, you have your A, yeah. B, C tier yeah. paid out at ninety percent, eighty percent, seventy percent, and it sounds like you're using last sale. Is that last Last sale only from eBay? Is that what you're referencing to determine last sale? We usually throw out a lot of eBay stuff. We see a lot of weird things happening on eBay. So we 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 use GPA or we'll we'll use, you know, go collect. We'll use different, different uh, you know, platforms, you know, heritage last Summarization sale. tools. Yeah, but we will we rarely will go to eBay and just look up a price. Well, I guess my point there is that it, it sounds like you're being consistent in how we, you're yeah. valuing their books and Absolutely. your books, which I Absolutely. think is is how you make it fair. So I wanted to make sure that that was clear to people. You you said a lot in that example. So I want to ask another question here. On your Instagram page, which is uh if I remember correctly, uh the blue chip comic. I wanted to make sure that I got it correct. You list two Two prices there. You list a cash price and you list Correct. a trade cash price. I know th the difference between the two, and some people out there do, but I don't want to assume everybody does. Talk about the two different prices you reference and the rationale behind that. Absolutely. So what we try to do is list the cash price a little below market. But if someone wants a, you know, a, a trade, obviously there's going to be fees, right? We have employees, we have a shop, we have overhead. Uh, as much as I like to, to make no money every deal, and this just literally cannot happen. So we bump our asking price. So if we're asking 150 for the Batman number one, we'll bump that by 10%. There is our margin, but it's not, we don't accept the whole 10% as profit. What we do is we literally use, so like say for instance, we took in uh, an A tier book, like an ASM number one, and we, we couldn't sell it. So we posted on, on uh, eBay. Now that 14% fee comes out, so we take 4% out of that 10% bump to offset that. Again, it's risky, 
I know it sounds crazy when I said this earlier because we're hoping we get full market value for every single A tier the minute they come in so we can make a 6% margin. If we do not, and that book declines, like 40 to 50% of the time, we'll take a little haircut in some of those books. So our margin shrinks in that transaction from 6% rapidly and the larger the book, right? So the larger the book, the less margin. And there's been times where we've walked away and we were hoping to break even on a multiple six figure transaction. So that happens often. It's not, you know, it's just part of the, you know, it's just part of the business. One of the things that I heard Derek say in, in his survey, his very official survey of one, uh, was that you guys are the, are the number one like trading partner. Is, is that the typical path for how people find you guys is through the Instagram page? Yeah. So we, yeah, Instagram is probably our number one uh, spot where we're contacted. You know, people will see us and recognize the blue chip comics. Those four words, they'll recognize us on eBay and then they'll say, Oh, I'm following you on Instagram. And then they'll jump on the Instagram page and, and start messaging us. And, you know, we, we, we literally, would prefer all traffic through Instagram. But when we do, like Derek was saying earlier, get those C tier books in like, this is crazy. Can I show this? Go for it. Yeah. It's a nine, six, uh, Avengers first label, uh, nine, six issue 40 right now. There's not a, for the Avengers collector that wants a, a near mint plus and better, you know, there's just not a lot of these available in the market, but this is what I would call no joke. And I don't want to offend anyone. This would be a C tier if it's not a first appearance. So that C tier, even the only reason the C tier is because a nine six is super rare. So yeah. the rarity allows us to be able to buy this book from that particular seller. Now we took all of his Avengers, Fantastic Fours, all nine fours, nine sixes from under issue 100. I was blown away that he had these, but we took them in as C tier. Now what we do with that is we literally put it underneath tomorrow's show. So don't tell anyone, guys, if you're on whatnot, don't mention what I'm about to tell you. We a, a, a is for Avengers, 40. <laughs> you know what's crazy? We literally throw it underneath a board. One in every 20 mystery bundles will have a complimentary slab like this in there and something else we call blue chip cash where they literally go in our buy it now if you take, you know, X-Men 2 Raw, stuff like that. So our second platform would be whatnot. That's really where we get a lot of that C tier and B tier, which is still great books. We put a little board over it and we just blow them out on our whatnot stream. So without Instagram, we couldn't have the whatnot mystery boxes every single week, four times a week. And without the whatnot, we couldn't do what we do with all that inventory coming in on a weekly basis, literally hundreds of slabs. Yep. So for the folks that are joining, we are uh, sitting here talking with, with Nico and Derek from the Blue Chip Comic about their strategy for helping put people in books grail books that they potentially would not be able to afford through a process of of cash and trade um it's also safe to say that somebody can just reach out to you and just pay straight cash if they wanted to do yeah. that they don't have to trade anything they can just do straight cash yes yeah i mean we just got shipped uh gold bars and silver bars last week so we take cash are you, really? are you oh, serious dead serious yeah like kilos and so we we literally will take oh, no. You, anything you, legal you can't legal you thing. can't say that on my youtube you just can't say kilos brother yeah that, that'll <laughs> that'll mess up the algorithm brother you next, know? next week we're waiting for exotic tiger no, <laughs> no. anything I, legal we'll take i see why you brought Derek on. he is comic again. relief that dude is funny over there yeah, no, he that, he's, he's hilarious well we literally took the silver bars i took the silver bars took them to a local uh jewelry store because i know they met melt those down in the gold bars Yep. and literally trade it in for a really nice gift for my wife for our anniversary. So we will accept any major form of payment. We have, we have an S corporation, my main corporation outside of comics. So we could take credit cards, international transactions, Venmo, Zelle, PayPal. We accept it all. There you go. I, I love it, man. I mean, again, I was captivated by the story that you kind of told me while I was at, at the kids practice about putting someone in Batman one. Um, what do you think it was painful for that guy to come up with all, all those books to, to trade for that Batman one? Have you experienced much discomfort or are people just so elated that they're able to get the book that they really want, that they're willing to make some sacrifices in order to get that grail book? Surprisingly, you know, every transaction we have, so about, I would say a strong, a large percentage, 90% or better of all of our interactions with our customers, they're repeat customers, mainly because uh, they walked away feeling like there was 
value to the transaction. Mm -hmm. Now, for him to be able to go out there and sell all those books over the amount of time, the market could change. It could go up, it could go down. Yep. And there's a lot of costs involved, a lot of time, literally thousands of hours packaging all those books that he's sending to us. Yep. And it's just so much that goes into it that there's no universe where he's going to ever be able to get a deal that way to go into a Batman one or a Superman one or for some some people, it's just an ASM one is their grail, and they thought they may have been priced out of that book. And so we're able to help that family, that collector, literally get into the book they've always said they are never going to be able to get into and get rid of a lot of books they probably didn't even really want to be in to begin with. Yep, so yep. it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. But, you know, obviously uh, not every deal works, and we understand that, And but we'll do everything we can. And Derek is a testimony. He's seen us uh, do things that we're not – why it was not financially responsible for the shop however you know i felt like we're building on relationships and i think all business should start with that as the foundation mm -hmm. if it's not about the relationships treating every person i don't care if they're spending one dollar one hundred dollars or one hundred thousand dollars with dignity and respect then you shouldn't be in business right and so um you know we really try to go that extra mile to win the relationship and then the deal will follow it goes a long way, man. It, it goes does. a long way when you treat customers with a tremendous amount of respect, right? Yeah. So, um, what 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 does the process look like, right? So, I go to your Instagram page. I see some some sexiness that I just want to bring <laughs> home, right? That was for Derek. I, do, I did that for you. Uh, <laughs> you you see that sexiness that you want to bring home. You you bang out the message to uh, the blue chip comic on Instagram. I'm sure. interested in X. What, yep. what does the exchange start to look like? Should I have a list of my books with my grades written out, ready to send over to you guys? Like what, what does the dialogue start to sound like to get it going? Reg, you're, you're hundred percent accurate. If they have that list already put together, if they have all their first appearance keys, send that over to us. We'll categorize them A, B, C. We'll know right off the bat. Are we going to pay 10%, which is better than they'd ever get if they listed on eBay? 90%. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 90%. Uh, or are we going to pay 80%? Or are we going to pay 70%? So we'll literally list that, send that back to them. We bump, we're very clear on every post. We bump ours by 10%. So our book will be 10% higher. So if it's, let's just say it's a $1,000 book and the last sale was 1100 and we're already the best price anywhere. Now we're going to bump it up back to that 1100 right? Because that's the 10% margin that we're going to need to be able to get out of your books. Uh, and hopefully make some type of profit. I like it, man. I really do because, you know, the the way that you started talking about doing deals with, with other folks, how they want to pay pennies on the dollar, that doesn't make you feel very good. And it doesn't put you in a favorable position to be able to do what you really want, right? And I've had people say to me, you know, uh, should I trade my books? And I'm like, no, you should just sell your books because at least you have the cash in your hand to be able to do what you want to do. Um, but but that's because trading with certain parties is really difficult and not advantageous. What you are describing here is a much more favorable type of transaction to both sides. And that's what I like about it. Thank you, sir. We do our absolute best, man, to to literally live by that model. We're not always going to make money. I say this every day. I don't know how many times at our, on any of our streams, whatnot, Instagram. But we want to make that relationship. We want to make that friend because if you're bought one comic, you're probably going to buy 10, right? Yeah. You probably, you know, so it's not going to end with that one comic. And so if you, know, you do it right, and I actually tell people that come here to do work at my house, the same thing, yeah. you, you can get me once or yeah. you can have a relationship long-term where you get to come back multiple times. You decide yeah. how you want to play it, yeah. right? I, I, how did Bush say it? <laughs> you could fool me once, but, uh. You ain't gonna fool me twice. If so, sir, messed up the you had said you, you then you tried to explain that. Yeah. You better be careful somebody throw a shoe at you from the other side of that camera, man. Right, you never right. know. <laughs> All yeah, right, so yeah. so for those folks that are coming in late, I am talking with Derek and Nico over at the Blue Chip Comic on Instagram about how you could potentially put yourself in a grail that you've always wanted that you didn't think that you could afford. If you came in late, you missed some great content, so I definitely want to encourage you guys to go back and, back and watch the replay. But as we get ready to wrap up here, gentlemen, any parting thoughts, part one, part two, where can people find you on the social medias if they want to reach out and have a conversation about a book well i have a question one of our uh one of our repeat customers 
Nick on Instagram, great dude, uh, literally asked me to ask you if I had time, uh, uh, why don't you mention news newsstands in the show? So I have a question for you. That That's the question? Why don't I mention newsstands? Yeah. It, it depends upon the video, right? In, in my in my mind, what I try to do is to uh, include in the video the information that is relevant and pertinent to the conversation. If it is a video about the popularity of a particular book, newsstands aren't driving most of the transactions. And so it's not germane to the conversation, right? So That's I focus right. on the direct, which is probably the bulk of the sales, right? And because well. uh, and I and I think I I know that person because I think they asked me the same question and I gave them the same <laughs> answer oh, when they oh asked my God. me before. Scarred his memory. I love it. Because here's it. the thing: I read all of the comments on my videos and I, I tend it. to respond and I also try to be super consistent. So it it has to be germane to the video because. The last thing I want is for a video to go on any longer than it needs to. I try to make sure that I'm courteous to the viewer. You get in, you get some information, yep. you get out, we that's move right. on with our lives, that's right? So Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I think that's a phenomenal answer. And, you know, the, what, the reason that we listen to your show, we even had it on uh, before you even asked me to uh, be on this, this, this podcast yeah. the other day, just literally listening to how you – it's very short order. You you really focus on that. And a lot of the information on what, what we're buying, what we're picking up mm -hmm. has come because you do what you do. So the minute we found out we could support in any way down the future, whatever, I told you that, you know, back after San Diego, yeah. let me know because yep. I, I really find so much value for the entire hobby, Thank the you. way that you roll out the announcements, the way you talk about what's hypothetical, but also really point out the factual aspects in a positive light as opposed yep. to like i feel like every the sky is falling after i get off of the show right no, That's I, I don't want that feeling man life is yeah. life is hard enough brother like yeah. It this is. should be fun. Yeah. And yeah, we, to your point, it's also a business and there's a lot of money involved, yeah. but we also need to have fun with this stuff, you know? Yeah. So any other questions for me before we wrap up? I No, you know. that, that was great. I told him <laughs> I tried to do it. I, I felt like I got my question in, but no, I, I'm excited about your upcoming book. Uh, Marcus, by the way, my friend, uh, we are, we're, look, we were just talking about that here at the shop with another comic book artist that was in, that literally works here. I have a comic book artist. He has his own comic out and everything, but Literally, uh, he was here at the shop. We were talking about uh, your book coming out. We're very excited to 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 have a few of those uh, coming in. And so, you know, we and we buy very few. We literally buy very few current books. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'm picking up every nine eight uh, UF four I can find just because I know there's only fifteen hundred of those printed. However, you know, it's just it, it, you know. So you're one of the books that will have more copies here than <laughs> Ultimate Fallout Four. So That's what's up? Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, man. It's it's been my absolute pleasure. Uh, do you want to shout out the social media as well yeah. as the uh, the whatnot so people know where to find you guys online? Yeah, we're we're at the Blue Chip Comic T H E Blue Chip Comic on Insta. Uh, same name on eBay. However, I prefer to deal on Insta as well as the Blue Chip Comic. I believe there's one page that's shut down on uh, on uh, whatnot. However, the Blue Chip Comic. Nothing behind it. Just T H E Blue Chip Comic. That's uh that's our whatnot page. We're new there. We've been there less than uh, less than ten months, but we sell about two thousand comics a week there. There we go, gentlemen. It has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you both about your business and what you all are trying to do. Um, I, I think based upon the comments that I'm seeing scrolling down the side here that I think the audience has appreciated as well. So looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys at some point soon. I know you talked about maybe popping into New York Comic Con. If it happens, great. If not, I'm confident that I'll see you Dang. somewhere. You'll yeah, be there? He's a CGC yeah. witness, so he'll he'll be there for work purposes outside of our shop. There you go. All good. Derek, if 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 you have a chance, I'll be somewhere around there. I, I'd like an opportunity to shake your hand. All right. Yeah, likewise, man. I look forward to it. And thank you so much for having us. You were spectacular. Great questions and uh, good job keeping it rolling. Thank, thank you, you brother. I try. All right, gentlemen. We'll talk soon. Take care. You're the thank man. you. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. So that was the blue chip comic. Again, I had a chance to meet uh, Nico and some of his team 
at San Diego Comic-Con. And we had a wonderful conversation then. And we've touched bases periodically since the last San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, they're they're doing some good stuff. And that's why I wanted to have them on the show. Because I, I think potentially folks can take advantage of that. What they do in a very good way to put themselves in in a good book. And we've, we've spoken about on the channel about how to make the hobby work for you. We've spoken about how to do trades. I've done trades. I've never done one with the blue chip comic before, but it is an interesting approach to be honest with you. So definitely something to consider. All right. Um, so there is something that has been in the news, a rumor, and I guess we should call it a rumor report. And I want to talk about this thing ever so briefly. Thank you, brother. And I did not cut the, <laughs> well done, Trev. I, I try, man. I try so hard to not cut people off at the end. You know, you have to get used to people's speech patterns. And sometimes they say something and you're not really anticipating it and you cut them off. So I, I try hard. But uh, CBR put this up, as did a bunch of other people. The rumor that is out there right now is that Wolverine will not be part of the new X-Men reboot. It says Wolverine will reportedly not be part of the initial X-Men lineup when Marvel Studios reboots the fan favorite comic book for the MCU. According to a trusted scooper, the current idea is to reboot the X-Men in the MCU does not feature Wolverine on the team. The scooper also hints that the studio's plan for the mutants is connected to Marvel starting to push the X-Men so hard across all mediums and will continue to push them until they're on the big screen that sort of makes good sense uh the article here highlights uh that uh hugh jackman has played this role for i think nine movies or something like that between 2000 and 2017 uh he's going to be appearing in uh, uh deadpool 3 and i think a lot of folks are excited about that uh it was announced and i and i shared this news on instagram and i think on youtube recently that marvel has let it be known that they are interested in hearing pitches this upcoming fall from writers that have stories to tell. So it, it, I don't know how you open yourself up to pitches while simultaneously saying you're not going to include one of the most popular characters ever. I don't know how that works. Um, but you never know. You never know how this is going to go. Uh, the, the challenge here that I, well, there's a lot of challenges. Making the transition from Hugh Jackman to any other actor is going to be problematic because he was so iconic in the role. I don't think people accepted him initially because of his height and that of Wolverine, which is much shorter stature. But I think people have come to love and embrace Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And to make a transition to another actor will probably go over as well as the Henry Cavill to the new guy that is going to be playing Superman in like, what is it, 2015 or something like that. So I, I this is one of those situations where you cannot win. It is impossible to win. It is impossible to make everybody happy because if you include him and you have another actor, that's a problem. If you don't include him, people are going to have a problem with that as well. And that's why I always say, do what you're going to do, but tell a really good story. If they tell an amazing story, people will miss Wolverine but they won't necessarily, that maybe won't be the first thing out of their mouth. They might be like, that was a good X-Men movie, right? Uh, and it would have been better had Wolverine been in it. But if they do not deliver, if they do not deliver a really good script and a really good movie, that potentially is going to be problematic for them not to have included arguably one of the, no, if not the most popular X-Men character out there uh, and, and arguably one of the more popular characters overall. Uh, people will have the look that Hugh Jackman has on his face right now, just befuddled and confused. So only time will tell whether this rumor is a real thing or not. Um, again, if they are opening themselves up to pitches, my assumption here is that they're going to hear pitches and they're going to decide who is in the movie and who is not in the movie based upon the pitches 
that they actually receive. And again, at the end of the day, fingers crossed that it is a good one. Uh, what are you talking about? Wolverine is, wait a minute, I lost the comment. Wolverine is the modern Ed, Edward Scissorhands being six foot five inches. There you go. No doubt about it. Uh, this is a great move by Disney. The hype to see the X-Men in the MCU will be great and they will make a lot of money. Then they can do it all over again when Wolverine joins the MCU. Great marketing. I do not disagree with that. I do not disagree with that. Tell a good story, lay a foundation and allow Wolverine to come onto the team at whatever point makes sense. At, at the end of the day, again, if they tell a good story, a lot will be forgiven. If they don't and they butcher it and they jack it up, there will be all kinds of questions that are asked about this. So it is it is going to be really interesting how this plays out. Hugh Jackman will only do another solo Wolverine if it's a musical. I say nay to that. I say nay to that. Wolverine is the second uh, most popular character behind uh, Spider-Man. Ah, uh, Marvel? Yeah, I, I would say you're... you're I don't know, man. Captain America and Iron Man. I'm trying to think back to the actual survey that was done. There was a there was an actual survey that was done, and I'm trying to think of the results. And it was basically Superman, Batman, Wolverine in the top three. I know Wolverine was on there, but I also think like Captain America and Iron Man may have also been in there as well. Uh, I again, I I can't remember all the details exactly because it's been a while. But you could make an argument. I would agree. You could make an argument that he is the second most popular behind uh, Spider-Man. But I also try to rely upon the data whenever possible. There are 479 more interesting mutants. I don't know about that, bro. I don't know about that. There, there's a lot of mutants out there. But Wolverine, by far, is my favorite mutant. He is my favorite mutant, no doubt about it. Scrolling through some of the comments here to see what else you guys are talking about. Is there a storyline that you guys would want to see? I had somebody say, bring out Mr. Sinister. And I can't remember the story arc that, that he cited. Uh, but I'm curious, is there a story arc for the X-Men that you would want them to potentially adapt to the, the movies? Uh, that is a question I want to throw out to you guys. I'm scrolling through some of the comments here. Wolverine uh, in a Hulk movie says, Steve Conge, it's good to see you, brother. Put Wolverine in Great Lakes Avengers where he belongs. Uh, nay. Nay says I. Nay says I. <laughs> Spider who? Well done. Scrolling through the comments here. Uh, you really can't have X-Men live action without Wolverine. He's literally the selling point for non-comic readers. And again, that's that that's the struggle right there, right? You don't include him. It's a problem. You include him and it's not Hugh Jackman. That's a whole nother problem. It, it's going to be interesting to see how they navigate these waters. And again, we don't know whether what this scooper is saying is true right? There's, there's no script. They, they haven't even heard pitches. So how are you saying that they're not going to include Wolverine? Maybe he knows stuff that we don't know. Um, uh, no, uh, no, <laughs> that no. So let's be clear, Chris bigger. That was not the order in which they were most popular. That is not the order. I think it was Superman can't remember. It was that they were in the top three. I cannot remember the order for the life of me. I cannot remember. It might have been Spider Man first, uh, which, which kind of makes sense. Uh, probably the same survey. There you go. Could be right. Cap is his guy, says Joe. Uh, scrolling through. We need a long shot movie. Bring in some mojo action. God love man. Can they put that opening scene on TV? Ooh, that. That right there, if you have not read God Loves, Man Kills, you are missing out because that is a great X-Men story arc. I include, I encourage you to check it out. The Mutant Massacre would be cool. Fall of the Mutants. I need to go back and read some of these. It's been so long since I've read some of these X-Men story arcs. I want to go back and treat myself. Inferno, Fatal Attraction. Uh, do you think that they should start with an origin story or jump into the meat of it, right? Because if you think about it, 
the, the everybody says everything after in uh, uh what was it uh Avengers Endgame is trash right but you also had like years to some degree or another building up to Avengers Endgame should they jump into a big story arc or should they build up to it and, and there's an argument that could be made either way for just jumping in and not doing origin stuff again or doing the origin as part of flashbacks and character development over the course of telling a better story. Should it be one movie? Should it be multiple movies? Um, th these are the things that, that I ponder, like what is the right recipe for telling the, an X-Men story for building a foundation that will last for a while in movies. I don't know the answer to that. And I'm, I'm sort of glad that I don't have to figure it out, to be honest with you, because, um, I don't know, um, scrolling through house of M you gotta have some, you gotta have some mutants first before you can start killing mutants off. Right. No more. You, well, you could, I think you could tell a story. You're probably right. You could tell a story. X-Men in the arcade. Love that two-parter says Michael, um, scrolling through, uh, blah, 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 scrolling through. I can't see, uh, Kareem, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Uh, first class only had a sprinkling of Wolverine made two good movies. I, 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 first class was not terrible. First class was not terrible. I agree. I, I know. I know what you meant, brother. Don't worry about it. X-Men first class, uh, Wolverine post credit scene, scrolling through some of the comments here. Uh, we need X-Men just like we did the dark Knight in the DC books back in the day. Uh, long shot. We need this <laughs> scrolling through, uh, give another, give another actor a shot. You may get someone better. Um, people don't like change, brother. He, I mean, Hugh Jackman is is getting up in age, and I think he could still do it. But why not go with a younger actor that you can have for the next 10 years to do movies? That would be a great way to go. But look at what's happening with uh, Henry Cavill. People cannot let it go. And I started to make a joke because Derek showed up in here with that S curl like he was Superman. I started to make a joke about that. But people struggle with change. They do not want to let it go. Um, scrolling through some of the comments here, I, I am not opposed to having some master molds and some sentinels come through. That would be dope. Again, at the end of the day, there are so many amazing stories and arcs that could be tapped into. Just tell a good story, tell a good story from end to end. Uh, and I think it will be great. I will also say to you, um, you know, and, and I try not to invoke woke too much, but if you think about it, the X-Men could potentially just go all sorts of wrong because of the nature of what the X-Men are. If they are not careful, it could go all sorts of wrong. Uh, scrolling through, Chris says, jump into the meat and potatoes. That is what my grandmother ate literally every day. Meat and potatoes. I am a fan. I am here for it. Let's go. I'd say flashbacks for origin going forward if you don't know. And again, I, you know, I, I think maybe you do jump into the meat of it and you, you develop the characters uh, over maybe a movie or two, giving these flashbacks, these glimpses into their history, that could be a good way to do it. That way you get people excited again. Put them in some dope uniforms, some comic appropriate uniforms. And I think that that would go a very long way, brother. I wish I used to look like a superhero. Now, now I'm just somebody's dad. Now I'm just somebody's dad. All right. With that said, we are going to wrap this thing up because I could honestly spend a lot more time talking about this topic, the X-Men the comments that were made by the director of Dr. Strange. He made some great comments earlier today that I covered in a short and a reel. I was going to tie these two topics together, but we are running a little bit long on time. I got so engrossed into the conversation uh, with the blue chip comic that uh, I didn't leave time for this other stuff, but the conversation we had with them was, was definitely a solid one. There is a link in the description of this video to check out the blue chip comic. So I definitely want to encourage you guys to do that. Uh, there will be some other details that are going to be revealed a little bit later. So I definitely want to encourage you guys. If you haven't, if you haven't subscribed to the show, go ahead and do that. Subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this live stream, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you really enjoyed it, 
like triple tap the thumbs up because that also counts. Uh, anyway, if you guys need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. Straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect. Now we're in distinct rooms of pure souls having them conversations. Synergy and combinations. You glad we waiting. Indian style in the gold temple of greatness. When you follow the North Star, you coming for the education. This is my audio book. These rhymes are just the imagery. More like an audiographic novel or a memoir. About a young MC making timeless music with his mentor. I pray I grasp my letters. Nothing was meant to last.